Welcome. Today we are going to look at glycolysis, um, also known as the named after this guy who discovered the pathway, M. Den Meyerhoff pathway. So we will start here. Glucose. Glucose is phosphorylated at carbon number six to give you glucose six phosphate. Or before I continue, glycolysis is divided into two stages we have an investment phase and a gain phase so up the first five this is one two three four five these five steps are the gain uh, no are the investment phase then the rest the rest are the the rest are the now from here one two three four five Five, if these are the gain phase. In the gain phase, we have five steps if it is aerobic glycolysis, and we have six steps if it is anaerobic. So generally, anaerobic glycolysis will have 11 steps, but aerobic will have 10. Maybe I should show you that uh, in a few. Yes, you can see aerobic is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten steps. Up to here is ten. They are the same for for aerobic and anaerobic up to pyruvate. Then aerobic anaerobic continues to form lactate, the eleventh step. Okay, let's start the first step. In the first step, in the first step, glucose will be phosphorylated at carbon number six to give you glucose six phosphate. So this is D glucose. Let me do that so that you can see it maybe clearly or as full screen. This is D glucose. It is phosphorylated at here, carbon number six here, this position specifically here. We had a phosphate group there, and a reaction which is catalyzed by hexokinase or glucokinase. There are some differences between hexokinase and glucokinase. I will say, how many? Let me say two, if not three. Hexokinase is found in all tissues except river. Glucokinase is found in the river only. Hexokinase will phosphorylate all hexoses except galactose. Glucokinase will phosphorylate glucose only. Another one, hexokinase has a low Michaelis Minton principle, uh, not principle, constant. My last glucokinase has a, a larger one, a larger Michaelis Minton constant. I don't know why I have said principle. So we, after phosphorylated, phosphorylating at carbon number six here, we get glucose six phosphate. Then that was the first reaction. You see, we have invested an ATP. So that is where we invest the first ATP. Now I will show you where we will invest the second. In the second reaction, glucose, glucose six phosphate here, which is an aldose, you can see because of this carbonyl carbon here, the oxygen is attached to the terminal carbon, is at, the aldose is converted, the aldose sugar, glucose 6-phosphate, is converted to fructose 6-phosphate. Here, there is a mistake. The double bond should be, shouldn't be here, it should be here. As you know, oxygen will bind to will bound, will bind with a will, will form a double bond with carbon here. So that reaction is catalyzed by phosphoglucose, phosphoglucose isomerase. This is a keto sugar now. Now that was the second reaction. This reaction is reversible. And like the first one of glucokinase and hexokinase, it is irreversible. This is irreversible. So even during gluconeogenesis, we will be moving this way. 
upward, but now we are cutting out the glycolysis is downwards. Then what happens to fructose 6-phosphate? Fructose 6-phosphate is phosphorylated at carbon number one. It's phosphorylated at carbon number one. See, we are putting it, putting in another ATP. So the second ATP is put in at carbon number one, a reaction catalyzed by phosphofructokinase one, an irreversible reaction. This phosphofructokinase one is a, is a, is an allosteric enzyme. It is activated. It is its positive modulators are AMP, adenosine monophosphate, and fructose 2, 6 bisphosphate. Also, its negative modulators are ATP and citrate. I've put them there. Then, so this is carbon number one, two, three. So we added a phosphate here to carbon number one. One, two, three, four, five, six. Here in this reaction, this compound formed is fructose one six bisphosphate, as I had said. Then it is cleaved here at this position. If you can see the cursor, this one, we cleave there. And the first three, the first three carbons form dihydroxy acetone phosphate. It gives you the dihydroxy acetone phosphate, the first three. Then this, the last three, carbon number four, five, six, will give you glycerdehyde three phosphate. Glycerdehyde three phosphate is the one which will proceed into the into the second stage, the gain phase. Okay, so. We have to convert dihydroxyacetone phosphate to glycerdehyde 3 phosphate. This is an keto group. This is an ardo. So via this reaction is catalyzed by the triose phosphate isomerase. Those are the first five reactions. The investment phase is now over. Now we will enter the gain, the gain phase. So after the hydroxyacetone phosphate is converted to glycerdehyde 3 phosphate, we will have two of them, two glycerdehyde 3 phosphates. So let's, let's go to the gain, gain phase. Let's enter the gain phase. This is now is the gain phase. Maybe I should. So this is now our glycerdehyde 3 phosphate. The two of them have we, have, we are representing only the one. The first, glycerdehyde 3 phosphate undergoes dehydrogenation, a reaction which is catalyzed by glycerdehyde 3 phosphate dehydrogenase. And we also add a phosphate group here represented by PI, the inorganic phosphate. So in this reaction, we will add an NAD to give you an NADH plus a hydrogen. Remember, this is in the cytosolic. Glycolysis is a cytosolic process. So this NAD, if it is during aerobic, and you will see why, if it is during aerobic glycolysis, this will be forced to enter the mitochondria to generate ATP. If it is using the shuttles, I've done a video on the shuttle systems, the mallet aspartate, shuttle system and the glycerol phosphate shuttle system. You use those system to channel this NADH into the mitochondria to, to the electron transport chain. So the compound formed after we carry out dehydrogenation, the compound formed is 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate. You can see this carbon number one, we have a phosphate there. The inorganic phosphate was added there. Then we have another phosphate here, carbon number three. That is why it is being called 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate, okay? Then we are proceeding this way. 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate 
will undergo the first foundation. This is a substrate level phosphorylation where we will add an ADP to generate the first ATP. So you have seen where the ATP comes from. That is why it is called the gain phase. But remember they are two, two, one, three. No, the one, three bisphosphoglycerate are two of them. So we will generate two ATPs, okay? But here, this occurs in the, the red blood cells. I, I don't want you to focus on this, on the diversion here. So this reaction is catalyzed by the phosphoglycerate kinase. Phosphoglycerate kinase, unlike other kinases whose reactions are usually irreversible, its reaction is reversible. Okay? So during gluconeogenesis, when we are moving upwards, we will add an ATP to get an ADP. But right now we are doing glycolysis, we are moving down. So we will add an ADP. ADP will be phosphorylated to give you an ATP, two of them, because they are two. The one, three is phosphoglycerate are two in number. Then after dephosphorylation, we will form a three phosphoglycerate. This phosphate is at carbon number three. Then we need to transfer this phosphate to carbon number two. So we will use the phosphoglycerate mutase. This reaction is also reversible. So note it moves from carbon number, it will move from carbon number, number three to number two, as shown here. Here it is at carbon number three, but here, it will move from here to here, carbon number two, okay? So after moving, sorry for that, yeah. after that, we, we continue. So after moving to carbon number two, it becomes two phosphoglycerate. Then in the next reaction, we will carry out dehydration because you are removing water essentially remember where yes we will carry out we carried out dehydration in the in the synthesis of a uh, should look at fatty acids so this idea is catalyzed by inores we remove water where are these elements of water coming from they are coming from this one the oh there and that one so here you will see they are not there. Not that one, sorry. I meant this one. Yes, this one. This one, sorry. They are a little bit crowded. So I should remove that. So this one, this hydrogen and this hydro hydroxide group, they give you water to form at this reaction is catalyzed by inorase. Maybe I should mention one thing about inorase enzyme. Inorase enzyme is usually inhibited by fluorine. So ask yourself, why do toothpaste contain fluorine? Because the bacteria in your mouth usually carry out anaerobic glycolysis. So they, they must pass through this step, okay? So when they carry out anaerobic glycolysis, they form lactic acid. Lactic acid is the one now usually, usually react with the enamel, the, the components of the enamel, the enamel to, to form, uh, after it has reacted, it will give you cavities. So if you, if fluorine will inhibit this, Inorase, this reaction won't carry out, so they, they won't form, they won't be, they cannot form lactic acid, so your teeth are safe. So this compound formed is the phosphoenopyruvate, a very, very important compound in gluconeogenesis. 
when discussing gluconeogenesis, you must come across phosphoenopyruvate. It is a high energy compound. So after forming phosphoenopyruvate, the next, the next, the next reaction is antiphosphoridation, a substrate level phosphoridation. We will add another ADP to give us the second ATP, the second pair. So in the gain phase, we, we will generate two pairs, two pairs of ATP, four ATPs, but in the investment we use two. So the net is four minus two, two ATPs are gained from glycolysis. So the, the reaction is characterized by pyruvate kinase to give you pyruvate. Up to here, up to here, aerobic glycolysis is done. Pyruvate will be convert, will enter the mitochondria. In the inner mitochondrial membrane, it will be converted to acetyl CoA by the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. That complex has three enzymes, the pyruvate dehydrogenase. You also have, uh, you have two dehydrogenases and you also have a transferase. And I, I will do the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. So, but what about, what about uh, anaerobic? Anaerobic is, is still not done. So, in anaerobic, we simply convert the pyruvate. The pyruvate is converted to lactate. Here is your pyruvate. So here is your pyruvate. Here, as you can see it, is converted to lactate. So when converting pyruvate to lactate, we put in NADH. Remember this NADH was obtained in the reaction number six, where we are converting a glycerdehyde three phosphate to one three bisphosphoglycerate. Here it, where it comes. So we add a hydrogen here and here at these positions, say to me, maybe I should throw those positions. So we add one, this, this, this is added here, this is added here. So here and here, okay? This is lactate, but when converting, then, then we form lactate. This is during anaerobic. Then when there is, the oxygen supply is back to normal, or high, lactate is converted back to pyruvate by the same, same, by the same, same enzyme, lactate dehydrogenase, where now we will remove this hydrogen. It is, goes back there, goes back there to give you pyruvate. Okay? So, maybe you should look at what is known as the core cycle. In the muscle, when we have lactate accumulating, lactate is transported into to the, to the liver where it, it undergoes gluconeogenesis to give you glucose, then glucose is transported back to the muscle where the, it will undergo glycolysis, the core cycle. It's a very simple cycle. So with that, I think we have come to the end of the Emden Meyerhoff pathway or what others call the glycolysis. Thank you.